is left left. We're in chapter 15. And friends, in chapter 15, we see the king once again um, finds, is prosecuted as if by the religious leaders. They've come once again looking for ways that they can speak out against our Savior. And we find that they look for anything and they found that Jesus' disciples don't wash their hands according to the tradition of the elders. And then we found that Jesus deals with this by saying that their traditions have caused the people to go against the word of God. And in the verses now we find that Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand, what goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. Now here's the interesting thing is, because remember yesterday, um, a good Jew not only washed his hands before he ate, but between every course. The Jews again believed there was a demon called Shepta, which could attach itself to one's hands while you were sleeping. And that's one of the um, traditions. That's why they would wash their hands continuously. And so Jesus is going to be speaking out against the traditions of the religious leaders because everything they did was outward focused. And in 1 Samuel 17, 16 verse 7 it says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance nor his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. People look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And so the religious leaders, that's all they do. They just focus on outward things, washing of hands, myths. Jesus says, the true believer focuses on what's happening inward. And so then the disciples came to him and asked him, Do you not know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? And here's the question, friends. Do you think Jesus did not know that the Pharisees were going to take offense when he spoke in this way because they knew he's speaking about them? Yes, this wasn't by accident. Jesus didn't do this by accident to speak this way. He purposefully offended them. We need to understand our Lord was kind and compassionate, but when, when something went against the word of God, Jesus did not hesitate to speak out and to speak out boldly against the sin. He replied, every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. And when you hear this, this should remind us of earlier, one of the parables that Jesus spoke. Remember he spoke about the wheat and the tares. Remember the wheat was planted and then at night someone came and planted the tares. And then it was asked, should the tares be plucked up? And Jesus said, no, leave it because you might damage the wheat. But he said, on the judgment day, the wheat and the tares will be plucked up and the wheat and the tares will be thrown into the fire where the wheat is his. And so Jesus once again speaks out and says, they will not get away with their false teachings. Leave them. They are blind guides. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. And so Jesus says, stay away from them. Don't listen to them. They are blind. Why? Because the truth of God's word, friend, sets us free. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet. And a light to my path. Unfortunately, their teachings were not a light. And so Jesus says, the blind lead the blind. And there are people today who want false teaching. The Bible says in the last days, people will get around them false teachers that will tickle their ears. That will speak good of sin. But that's not truth. And that will not bring life. And so people have sometimes asked me, Timber, what should we do? We're in the church, we love the people, but we don't agree with the teaching. And many times people say, we just stay because we trust things will change or because we're so used to the church. Well, I believe friends like Jesus speaks here 
he, he, he denounces these false teachers. My advice always to someone is, if you're in a place where teaching isn't true, get out. Peter said, explain the parable to us. Are you still so dull, Jesus asked them. And so Peter comes to the Lord and he says, Lord, um, can you please help us to understand what you are saying here? And Peter was always the spokesman. He spoke on behalf of the disciples. But I love it that the Lord doesn't only turn to Peter, but he says to them all, he says to the disciples, you've been with me now for more than two years. Do you still not understand the word of God? Are you still so dull? Are you, you still have no spiritual understanding? And so we see here, uh, Lord doesn't even mix words with his disciples. Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? And so Jesus says to them, your diet does not defile you. Whatever you go eat, and we know, we, whatever we eat, the stomach juices burn it, and then it leaves the body again. But the things that come out of a person's mouth comes from the heart. And these defile them. And so Jesus says, the true filth is not something that you eat, but it's the words that come out of the heart, not that heart muscle that pumps things. Because the heart in the Bible, it's what you think in your mind. That's the heart. It's the thoughts that come up in a person. And it's that that Jesus says is the true filth. That's what defiles a person. And then he goes on to explain, he says, For out of the mouth come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, and slander. And we find in Galatians, and Paul speaks about this, he says, The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. And so Jesus warns you, friends. He, he warns and he says, be careful, because the, the Pharisees are leading you astray. They are so concerned by all these rituals and all these traditions where Jesus says, these are not the things that cause someone to go lost. You're not saved by these traditions. You're not going to inherit the kingdom of God by these words. He says, be careful what is coming out of your heart, out of your mind. The things that you are speaking and thinking, these are the things that can lead us stay. Because what you think later on, you act on. And as we see here, Paul warns, he says, if you're living continually in these sins, you will never see the kingdom of heaven. These are what defile the person. But eating with unwashed hands do not defile them. Friends, here's the question you need to answer this morning. Is your religion built on rituals? Are you just doing religion? Or are you truly in a relationship with the Lord? Does worship come from your mouth? Does praise come from your mouth? Does forgiveness come from your mouth? Does kindness come from your mouth? Or does hatred, condemnation, lust, or greed? You know what's in your heart. You know the thoughts. You know what your mind is continually thinking about. You know how you are living your life. And so my prayer this morning, or my appeal to you is speak life, think life, think the things of God, act upon the things of God, and not about the things that are from the evil one. So check your life and make sure that inside you are living in a way that pleases God, that the Spirit of God is leading you. This is Rev Trev. See you tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm.